Um, I want to thank Rocket Space for hosting today's event. Um, this event uh, is part of also Oracle's Total Access Program. And I'm not sure if everybody's heard of Oracle's Total Access Program, but we do large panels, uh, we do uh, in-depth training sessions, uh, similar to this, where we get into a topic and spend a lot of time on the topic. Um, next week, we're actually having a fundraising series. Uh, Wednesday in San Francisco, it's a whole series of, of uh, events trained to uh, uh, help entrepreneurs get their pitch ready and go through the whole process of a fundraising series. And Chad, uh, Chad Lynch, who runs our total access program, so there. Is it next Wednesday? Is yes, next? yeah. Next Wednesday. You should be receiving an invitation sometime today if you don't. Send me an email. No, or send me an email. Send Chad an email. The Rocket Space folks can help you get me. Fantastic. Uh, so before we get into the presentation, I want to have some questions for you guys. So first of all, uh, how many here is an investor? Who's an investor? We've got one, two investors. Um, and I want to be asking you guys a few questions throughout the, the panel. Um, and just for my education, are you guys angel investors or uh, later stage? What? Later stage. So we have one angel investor, one later stage, which is great. It's good we can be asking you guys some questions. So the rest of us are entrepreneurs. How many here have already raised their angel round? Keep your hands up if you've raised your angel round. So we have a few who raised their angel round. And people who raised their angel round, have you done it with convertible notes? Convertible notes. Okay, we've got two, three, four convertible notes. Anybody done it with equity? One equity, two equity. Okay, so some people raised. And the first, per first question I always get uh, when we uh, talk about fundraising for early stage companies is, and this is often one where I have uh, maybe an entrepreneur not from the United States, uh, and they say, why can't I just sell common stock? Why can't, why does it have to be so complicated? Why can't I just sell some more common stock? Uh, nice and easy, I'm authorized with my charter, uh, I just issued some common stock to the founders, uh, it was one piece of paper, very, very simple uh, document. Why, why can't I issue just common stock? Does anybody have an idea why we don't do common stock for angel rounds? Right here. You don't want to value your company this early. Okay, valuation, and we'll get into that a lot. But you'll hear from our, some of our investors, early stage investors, today they like to value your company. They want to either have a cap valuation or value. So that you don't always get around that. They want preferred stock. Uh, there's a lot of issues with that, but mostly the investors want to have the right to pull their money out first before the sweat equity gets paid. There's also one of the key values in startup is an ability to attract talent. Um, you know, intellectual capital, talent, very competitive. If you were going to try to bring in your team at the same value as you're going to bring in the investors at the, at the stock price, it may be difficult. You had to give somebody 25% of your company and you're valuing at the same price. As the money's coming in, it's, it's expensive. So one of the ideas, and we'll get into these terms, with preferred stock or convertible notes, is the common stock will have a lower value, a depressed value, because they're seeing your rights above it. And therefore, you can use that as a very valuable uh, currency to attract talent. So I just wanted to talk about that a little bit. Now I have to come over here. So, maybe, we'll see. Uh, also, Amanda Galton, one of my colleagues uh, from ORC is here, so um, she does lots of uh, angel financings and she can help answer questions afterwards. But she's still around. I'll be here. <laughs> okay. She'll keep me honest. But, Okay. So we're going to talk about convertible notes, angel equity financing, and managing your investors. And um, a lot to cover in just an hour. And there's no way we can cover everything in an hour. But I do want to have people 
as I go through this, if they have a question, um, uh, stop me. You know, because I am positive if, if I'm going too fast and somebody has a question, somebody else is going to have the same question. All right. And we'll see what we get, how far we get to this. So convertible notes. Um, advantages for convertible notes over uh, a preferred equity round or a series seed round. Uh, mostly, it's a more simple process. Uh, the term sheets are much shorter, um, less issues, um, fewer documents, um, it will be much quicker to get done, and less legal expenses. My general advice to, to my clients is you don't want to pay really anything to lawyers at this early stage. You know, the, the hope is all the money you can raise can get into the business and, you know, build your business so you can affect that in the business. And so often we think of convertible notes as the fastest, cheapest way to bring angel money in uh, versus a preferred stock run. Um, who talked about the valuation? Somebody talked about the valuation. So if you have a company and you do an equity round, you're going to have to value the business. And traditionally, that was the, one of the, also the prime advantages of, of the convertible note deal was you would kick the valuation to a later date. And when we were doing convertible notes, 2000, 2002, 2000, I think really pre-2006 or seven, almost all convertible notes did not have a capped valuation. And we'll talk a little bit about capped valuations. It was really just a bridge to a venture round, and there was generally not even a discount, it was generally more coverage. And that's how we structured convertible notes. <coughs> then, right around the time of the Great Recession started, um, and also combined with the fact that you could do a startup much cheaper than you used to be able to do it, um, investors got smart and said, well, this is crazy. Why would I want to um, give a company, we'll use an example, um, say $100,000, small thing, um, just a startup, and then wait to hit all these milestones and then get maybe a $7 million pre. You know, I could get very little percent of the company. So cap valuations came into play, um, and we see them in almost every deal. I've not done an uncapped valuation note, I don't know, in about three years. The only times I ever see that would be a really a true bridge in between like a Series A or a Series B. Uh, but generally, we're seeing all cap valuations. Um, who's my angel investor there? Is it, would you do a, a deal without a cap valuation? So it's, it's in every deal, it's just part of the deal. So that gets us to the question is, are we really kicking the valuation down, you know, down the way? And a lot of it depends upon the cap. If the cap is a $10 million cap, you probably are. If it's a $2 million cap, you probably priced your deal at that, at that number. Um, other advantages of convertible notes, um, it does say flexible valuations. So with convertible notes, we'll talk about this a little bit, is we can do what we call tranche notes. So you can do you know, the first closing at one valuation with one cap and one discount, and then you can do another closing or later amounts at a different cap and a different discount. So we'll talk a little bit about the, the pros and cons of that, but, but you can do that more easily than you can do with a straight equity round where you have to file the charter and you really have a price, uh, which is more static pricing situation. Um, you can do rolling closes, um, and you can do that with equity too. Um, um, so a lot of people say, well, if I close this note, does that mean I'm done? No, you can do rolling closes. Um, so you can keep closing more notes as you go along. Um, we've already talked a little bit about protecting the lower valuation of, of your common for your employees. Um, now, also, notes tend to have much less due diligence by the investors from the legal side. Maybe not from the business side, but from the legal side, generally, angel investors, if they're going to do a convertible note, aren't going to spend a lot of lawyer time on reviewing things. Uh, because the way the note works, it's got ratchet and dilution. They're less worried about the cap structure uh, because they know their note will convert when you do your uh, venture rounds and the venture rounds can do real diligence and they'll be protected at 
that time. Um, so we, we, we tend to see very little legal diligence on a note offering. Um, and then lower legal costs um, for the private advantages. This is better than note. So, okay, so with today's market, you're going to have that discussion on valuation. So it's all about the cap. Um, is it, okay, so your name Thor? Sorry, I'm a little boy back here. Um, so when you come into a note round and you're looking at uh, your caps, how do you approach that? Are you looking to value the company or just have what you figure is in the market? Uh, I actually don't like So you're hearing that because, because of the valuation issue? Yeah. And, I, I, yeah, and that's an important point. I think what I've also found recently, the last three financings I've done, the investors have all insisted on, on equity, uh, series seed equity over the convertible notes. Um, but generally, if you do a note deal, uh, what I have found is you're going to be in that discussion on valuation. Uh, that. You know, maybe if you're a wide combinator company or if you're somehow in a hot company, you can, you can get away with a very high cap. But generally, the investors I'm seeing today are looking for a reasonable cap based upon your business and evaluation. And you're going to be in that discussion. Um, so it's no longer, you're going to get away with that. Um, debt, so a note is a debt, is a debt instrument. So if you have to ever show your balance sheet, question. Did everybody hear that? So the question is, what is a high cap? So maybe I'll take this. We're going to talk about caps in a second. But a cap means, so a way a convertible note works is, let's make an example, um, very simple. Someone's going to put $100,000 into your business and say you've got a pretty low cap of $900,000. So the whole idea is that $100,000 will convert into your next equity round, uh, Series A or Series C, but not at a valuation higher than $100,000, so not higher than $900,000 pre-money, which means post-money that $100,000 should represent 100,000 out of a million, which is 10% of the company. So that person is thinking that they're, they're going to put $100,000 in and they're going to have 10% you know, of the company post-financing, net of, of dilution from this, the, 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 the new money that comes in. But vis-a-vis -vis the old money, they're going to have 10%. So th you know, that's how the cap works. So you could be doing your round, your Series A round, just say the Series A round, at a seven million dollar pre-money valuation, the Series A would be priced at seven million. The notes would be priced at, at the cap of nine hundred thousand, which is an extreme difference. Um, but that's how the, the note holders protect themselves is with that cap. Without the cap, the notes would convert at the seven million pre. I would consider a high cap for you know an early stage startup to be you know ten million dollars. That'd be a really high cap. Uh, you know. You know, unless you've got